I love using handsaws. They come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, but basically these days, for all of us, there are two different types. There's a Japanese style that cuts when you pull the saw, and there's an old-fashioned Western style that cuts when you push the saw. Back in the Paleozoic day, when I was just starting out as a cabinet maker, this is all I knew, a push saw like this. But since then, when I got to try out Japanese saws, oh, many, many years ago, I just basically parked my Western saws because these worked for me so much better. And I'm going to show you their advantages and some disadvantages. This is a pair of rip saws, a Western style carpenter's rip saw. You're all familiar with, I'm sure. Big teeth facing forward, used to cut down the length of a board. This is a Japanese style two-sided saw. One side has cross-cut teeth, the other side has rip teeth. You can see the teeth lean towards the handle, towards the operator on the Japanese style saw. On the Western saw, they're facing away from you. Completely different feel to the two saws. How much effort is involved is also a different matter as well. And let me demonstrate that with the two cross-cut saws on this uh, simple piece of pine over here. Using a Western saw, of course, just a single grip, you would start the cut on the near side of the board and hold your thumb next to the saw to guide it. And your initial stroke has to begin with some oomph in order to get going. Otherwise, it, the saw will just kind of skitter on the board. But if you just give a nice definite cut like this to the first one, then you're off and running. Japanese saw is totally totally different. I was going to say backward. It's not backward. It's just different. You would begin the cut on the far side of the board, again using your thumb as a guide if you need to. And then I'm just going to grip it with one hand. But once you get going, cutting with two hands requires very little effort. In fact, you don't really have to even push down at all. Just let the saw do its work. The result is that this requires less effort because it's got a thinner blade, makes a thinner kerf than a western style saw, which takes more effort. Now beyond that, a Japanese saw doesn't need any sharpening. It already comes sharp, the teeth are hardened at the factory, you can't sharpen it yourself. If it gets dull, you replace just the blade, keep the handle. No problem there at all. It's ready to go right out of the package. On the other hand, a western saw like this, some of them come pretty sharp, some don't. The ones that don't are difficult as heck to sharpen because, well, the teeth are so small. You need a very fine file, good eyesight, good hand-eye coordination. And when the saw gets dull, which will happen faster than with this saw because these teeth are not hardened, then you have to sharpen it yourself. You probably won't find anybody in your town to sharpen the saw for you. Because unlike a carpenter saw, which you can find someone to do that for you, you'll never find anybody who has the equipment, the knowledge, or the training to sharpen a saw like this. So, lovely saws. They work very well. There's been a big renaissance in their manufacture. Lots of interest in using them. But by and large, give me the choice between the two. I'll go for the Japanese pull saw every day.